Fam review. Hey guys, World Leader here. Today we're going to be going over another familiar. This one's going to be a little harder to craft than the other ones. It's going to be Tethius, of course. One of the best, if not the best, tank familiar in the game currently. Let's go ahead and pull up their schematic. Now we're going to go ahead and start off with the base kit, their stats. We're going to go on to the build, then the skills, and then how to craft them. So right off the bat, Tethius comes with 30% max shields, which is amazing, 30% of A chance, and 20% water resistance. You're going to also see here that they are leaning towards the tank roll. They have a lot of stamina, a lot of damage, but they are a little slow, which is perfectly fine since they are trying to fill the role of tank. Let's go ahead and go on to the build. We're going to start off with the regulator pumps. I recommend only two types of pumps for Tethius. For pretty much an all type of scenario thing, you would want evade all across the board on all three of these pumps. Now, if you want to do something a little more competitive in the PvP area type of things, like a little bit more of a heavy hitting kind of tank, then I would recommend using something like Empower. But, in my opinion, the best thing to put with Tethius is just all evade. And even if you did use Empower, you'd probably still use to evade with it. Personally, I think all evade is perfect. But, Empower does have a home for Tethius. If you guys have any other recommendations, leave them in the comments below. I would love to see what you guys have to say, and I'll probably even test it out myself. For the chip, I've talked with a bunch of different people about what chip to put on Tethius as they're an evade chance tank. And everyone still says these same things. Only going to be damage reduction of any type if you have one when shielded or when the team's alive. Whichever one you can manage is the best one, honestly. Because I know a lot of people don't have like every type of chip. So depending on what chips you have, as long as it involves damage reduction, it's good. In my opinion, the best ones would be when the whole team's alive or when shielded, since they have a lot of self-shielding abilities. So... I highly recommend when shielded if you can. You could also try heal power, but I don't think it's going to be all that useful. So I recommend something involving more damage reduction while shielded as a best case scenario. For the brain augment, I almost always use an offensive brain when you get hit. I personally like attack strongest and attack enemy team as my top two favorite brains for Tethius. But if I need something tanky, of course, I'm going to do the spread heal and shield brain when I get hit. So those are going to be the options for Tethius. Any offensive brain when you get hit or a defensive brain when you get hit. I recommend something with either heals or heals and shields since you get a lot of shields from yourself. But having a shield self or sorry, the shield team when hit or spread shield when hit is fine. It's still pretty good because you do have that extra 30% max shields. Again, work with what you can. Even epic pumps of uh, evade would be perfect for him because he has so much right off the bat, especially with that extra shield. It's still fine. Now to go on to the skeletal lining, I only recommend redirect chance unless you have just like a full team of tanks and it doesn't matter who gets hit in PvP, let's say. Um, then you can do maybe something involving heals, like when you drop a certain percentage, you get more heals. That's up to you. I think almost every tank should have a redirect unless they're running a support type of role. So redirect all the way for me. Let's go ahead and go on to the skills. Now let's check this out. They have water damage to the closest enemy two times. Pretty cool animations. Shield self. That one's dope. And they also have a water damage to random enemy three times. Deals water damage to the furthest enemy three times. Deals water damage to all enemies. And we also have spread shield teammates for so-and-so and heal teammates for so-and-so. In my opinion, the only abilities you're going to use is going to be smother. Because you're going to want to keep your shields up. But if your shields are at max or very close to max, you can try using something else. I recommend only using smother and azimuth. If you do want to do anything else, I would probably only recommend engulf. Um, or, of course, uh, fling or phalang scream everything else is pretty much useless i would not use surge and i would not use tempest so in order i would do smother azimuth phalang scream or um engulf everything else is pretty um not useless but just not as useful but that's going to be pretty much wrapping up the teethiest part of this 
the main familiar part of this at least. Let's go ahead and go on to the schematic. Now the schematic here looks fairly simple if you look at it. It looks very simple. It's going to take three types of familiars, two legendary, one epic, and 100k gold. And some people are like, wow, that's easy. Well, there's a lot more to it. So I'm going to start off with the easy part, starting at the end. You're going to need 100k gold just for Tethius. This is not counting anything else. 100k gold for each Tethius. And if you want to make one maxed out, which is going to be six Tethius, you're going to need 100 times six is 600k. You're going to need 600k gold. You're also going to need six Mogher's. Mogher is super, super simple. You click here on Mogher. Sorry, click right here on Mogher. You go to this left orange square. You'll see the little map logo. You click on that. It shows you everywhere you can persuade or bribe this familiar. So Mogher's catacomb pretty much shows you that's his location. Anywhere with this little red lettering will show that that has a pretty much like a raid boss, which is usually where they have the highest capture rate for any other location, except maybe raid, but there is no raid familiar that also shows up in quest. So I guess that doesn't matter. But anyways, you're gonna always wanna click the one with the red letters most of the time, if not all the time, it has the highest capture rate. So Mocker's Catacomb, click there. Just for some more insight, you see here that it's tier six. So just go to the tier six zone, and you can just find Mogher's Catacomb. Always farm Heroic for the 200% capture rate bonus, and that's how you're going to get them. You just get six of them, along with the 600k gold, six Porheus, and six Kraken. Now let's go ahead and check out what those guys need. I'm going to type in Coral for Coraliner, since we need Coraliner for this. Now, before I go ahead and show you these guys, let me just show you where to get Coraliner, just so I don't confuse you all. Let's go to World Boss. We're going to go to Summon. And we're going to see here that there is a Titan's Attack World Boss. You can get Coraliner just by playing Titan's Attack. You can do it from tier 11 all the way to tier 16. You can do it from normal all the way to heroic. It does not matter. Everything you need is in all difficulties, all tiers. It has Titan's Attack. So as you see here, tier 11, normal. Let's check the loot. You see here there's a Tethia schematic. Kraken schematic, and a Porheus schematic. And this is normal, so you can still get the mythic and legendary drops from here that you need. Do I recommend farming normal? Unless you really have to, no. Uh, always do heroic, no matter what tier. Um, and then here, if you scroll down more, you can see Coraliner. Let's go ahead and check out heroic. Here you have some more goodies that you're able to get. Of course, with the schematics, as you see there. Coraliner as well. Now let's try any other tier, tier 14. Let's even do normal, just to show y'all. Normal, you'll still see here, Tethius, or his Kraken. Come down, Coraliner. So pretty much any tier, any difficulty Titans attack, you will get everything you need material-wise and schematic-wise. For familiars, you're going to have to do a bunch of other stuff, and I'll show you that right now. I already showed you where to get Mogher. Let's continue on with the rest. I'm going to type in Coraliner again, or Coral for short. We're going to go ahead and start off with this first one, Kraken. Now, Kraken's going to take 100k gold, which is very, very lame because gold is kind of annoying, but it's not too bad. Um, so in total, at a minimum so far, if you want to make one max out Tethius, counting the Kraken and everything, you're going to need at least 12k gold. So, or 12k gold, sorry. Uh, 1.2 million gold, which is a lot. So, we're going to go ahead and start off here. You're going to see Coraliner, Hestia, and Cronus. Now, Cronus is going to be used in both, so I'm going to go over Cronus first real quick. But on Cronus, you're going to see Rugums. Now, this is another part that's kind of a headache um, because it is another epic familiar from quests. You're going to start off with Mogher and Rugums first, and you're going to start this farm as soon as you can. The only reason why you would not start this farm early on is if you're still making your DPS familiar and you're running tank or bait. That would be the only reason why you would not start off with Rugum's farm right away or mock her farm right away. So, try to get as many Rugums as possible. Do I recommend bribing them? Only if you want to. Um, there is no rush to making Tethius. In my opinion, the faster you make them, the better, yes, but... Um, I personally don't think you have to bribe any epic familiar that you see in the quest area. I would only leave um, bribing to maybe raid familiars, which we'll get on into the next part here in a second. So Rugums, let's go ahead and see where they're at. Rugums Sewer, 
Let's check out the loot drops. And you'll see here, tier six. So they're gonna be in tier six, Rogum Sewer. That's where you get them. You're gonna need six of them for one Tethius. Oh, sorry. You're gonna need 12 of them for one Tethius since you need Cronus on both Bracken and Porheus. So for Cronus, you're gonna need to get a lot of these things. You're gonna need to get Rugums 12 times. You're gonna need to get Scuttles 12 times and you're gonna need to get Sammy 12 times. These two aren't a problem at all. For Scuttles, let's go ahead and check out where they're at. Gugaman's Vault, if you click on Gugaman's Vault, you go to the loot drops, you'll see that's tier eight. Still very early to farm this. You can farm all of this early on. I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description to actually go ahead and see everything you need just to make Tethius. Let's go on to Sammy here. Sammy's gonna be in Wardy's Corridor, which I believe is tier four. Yes, tier four. And they're also gonna take Coraliner, 10 Coraliner. So Cronus is gonna be one of the ones you're gonna wanna focus on making right away. If you can, I would start making Cronus first. And I'll tell you why. Um, Cronus is going to be first because you can start farming Cronus almost at the earliest convenience possible with Sammy on the team. I don't think there's anyone else here that's earlier to make than Cronus. Maybe, um, no, yeah, I think Cronus is going to be the earliest one you could possibly make. So you start farming. Uh, you're going to go to Cronus and if you see the skills here, they have water damage to closest enemy, deals water damage and drain health from all enemies. Pretty cool animations. Deals uh, water damage to target enemy and deals water damage to random enemy. Now, the reason why I'm showing you this is because you could always use this familiar while you're crafting everything else. You don't have to directly make a Tethius the moment you can. You can six stack or five stack a plus one here and use them as your DPS familiar if they're doing better than the Drazig you're probably making or any other DPS familiar that you happen to have made. So Cronus would be a nice one to start with if you can very easily make Hestia, make Hestia. But I can tell you right now, Hestia, which uh, we're gonna go ahead and explain right now since they're a part of the build, Hestia takes Galas. And Gala is the very most annoying part of Tethius. But I promise you, it's not that bad because you only need one Gala. Then it's LL, Uggs, and Coraliner. So Coraliner, I showed you where to get. Uggs is going to be the same place you farm Rexy at Rexy's Plateau. If you go here, you'll see that it's tier 4. Well, you could actually farm Estia pretty early too. That's pretty cool. And you have LL here, which is going to be tier 10, I believe. Elemental Colony. Yes, tier 10. And then Gala here is going to be the hardest part of the whole build. Gala, you have to get in Gorbin's Rock and Ruckus. Gorbin's Rock and Ruckus, if you guys don't know what that is, is going to be... The tier 10 raid which is going to be this one right here gorbin rockin ruckus so if we go here to the loot drops you see here tier 10 yes tier 10 i don't think you can get tethia schematic here no you can't yeah no tethia schematic here um the cool thing about this is if you do plan on making i believe it's elementarium if you plan on making elementarium i believe this is the area you farm the mythics for that so you can always do a double whammy like that which is great but yeah you do have to go back and farm some older raids if you don't have what you need what i recommend honestly anyone doing even if you're free to play save some gems um especially if you already have a decent accessory and pet save some gems um the faster you work on your familiars the faster you'll succeed in passing flags. I promise you, some people have doo-doo um, uh, loot. They don't have any good sets, no good weapons, no good builds, but they have killer familiars and it gets them through the game like crazy with just TS alone. So you gotta make sure you focus on your familiars. Sometimes they'll take you further than a good set will. So once you farm all the galas you need, whether you bribe them or persuade them, then you can make Hestia after getting these, of course. So the good thing is you only need one familiar that takes Hestia. So you only need six of her to make one maxed out Tethius. So after explaining that, that's pretty much the basics for the epic familiars. But for this guy, Porheus, you also need two rares along with Coraliner. So let's check out those rares. They're going to be here at the bottom. These are honestly very, very simple. Um, you can probably make these literally in one day, both of these. Um, 
Cor- uh, Coralus is going to take Dragons, which is going to be dropped in Rugum Sewer, same place you get Rugum, so you're going to be getting him like crazy already. Um, Coraliner, of course, and 5k gold. And Creus, which is going to take Cerebrimark, Cerebrimark, I don't know how to say that, but Cerebrimark, I guess, <laughs> is going to be in a lot of places, but it says here Wardy's Corridor, so you can go ahead and farm him there at Wardy's Corridor. And that's pretty much going to be it for Tedious here. Let me go ahead and see if there's anything else. I believe that was it. But anyways, um, I guess just a little more about the familiar before I go ahead and end this. Tethius excels so much in PvP, and they're honestly very, very good in Invasion and Trials Gauntlet. I highly recommend this familiar. I would not be making this video if it was a familiar I didn't recommend. If it was a familiar I recommend avoiding, I would state it. Do I recommend free to plays go for this? Absolutely. Is it a hard task? Yes, it is. But guess what? There's a lot of hard tasks in this game, and it's not something you guys can't overcome. So thank you so much for stopping by. If you guys have any questions, maybe any comments you want to leave in the comment section, go for it. Any tips, anything at all. I'm always open to anything. Thank you so much for stopping by. This is World Leader. Have a great one. Peace.